attraction is not a scene, but lost is a scene. You do not prepare to get to a place and you're feeling like when I get there, I'm definitely going to be attracted to this person or that person or the third. It's just that you got there and you look at this person and they are well glammed, they look good, they spark up your interest and they arouse your interest and then they catch your attention. So now you feel like you are attracted to them. Now is that a scene? Attraction is not equal to lust. Now I am making today's video because there is someone that I believe needs to hear this. Maybe you are living your life and you're trying to serve God and then you're finding yourself attracted to people and you feel like you've committed sin because you genuinely do not want to fall into this trap of feeling like you're lusting after someone because you don't want to sin. Now, attraction is not a sin, but lust is a sin. So attraction and loss, as much as they look related, they are distinct. They are distinct concepts from each other. That is what I want to speak about in today's video. I am Uwem Akpan. This is my YouTube channel. If you want to continue watching this video, stay on. And if you are yet to subscribe to my channel, I would like you to hit the subscribe button. Now, the way I see attraction is kind of like someone that sneezes. You get around a certain area. Maybe your allergy is packed up and then you get to sneeze. You didn't plan to sneeze. Now, that is how attraction is, the way I see it, because it is not planned. You do not prepare to get to a place and you're feeling like, when I get there, I'm definitely going to be attracted to this person or that person or the third. It's just that you got there and you look at this person and they are well glammed, they look good, they spark up your interest and they arouse your interest. And then they catch your attention. So now you feel like you are attracted to them. Now, is that a sin? No, it's not a sin. Because you don't want to come to a place whereby you feel like you don't want to see people who are attractive. And it could happen on both sides of the gender. There are women, whether you're married or not, that are attracted to men. Married or not. Of course, you have a story in the Bible whereby Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph, this fine young man. Who was attractive and she's like come sleep with me now what you do with the attraction you feel is what makes it a sin or not the truth is lust on its own is totally different from attraction well attraction is a feeling of being drawn to someone emotionally physically or intellectually psychologically spiritually you can put all these things there are so many things that can make you attracted to someone Maybe the way they pray, the way they talk to people, the way they talk calmly, the way they look also applies. But lost on the other hand is just about the physical attraction of someone and about sexual gratification. Lost is a strong desire for sexual gratification. Like you just look at this person and all you look at about them is their body and you objectify their body. And the way I see it is that lust is pervasive. It is corruptive. It corrupts the mind. It corrupts the heart. It corrupts the lens, the perception of how you look at a woman. And even women that lust after some men, it corrupts the way you look at men. Because when you look at men, you're looking at their body, you're looking at sexual things about them. Just like a man would look at a woman and looking at her almost like seeing her naked in his head because it is that pervasive. He can see through to her no matter how well dressed she is. So that's why when it comes to the argument that people have around, oh, this person dressed like this, I stand for modesty. But then you would never be able in the world we live today to enact a law of modesty everywhere you go. So when it comes to lusting, you are solely to take responsibility or accountability for yourself. If you have a lost problem, you have to deal with that. You have to work that out. You have to look for a way to deal with your lost. But then on this, because I don't want to digress, the video is for me to just make this distinction for you to know if you are attracted to someone, it is just innocent. It is just natural. You should not start feeling guilty that you are attracted to someone and start giving it a thought before you know. But by the time you start giving that attraction a thought, Oh, you're already attracted to them and all of that. It can lead you to that lust that all you're looking at or all you're thinking about 
is their physical body. How their rear view look, maybe as a man looking at a woman, oh wow, what a beautiful rear view. Or oh, front view, wow, beautiful woman, fine face, fine legs. Should you not? Yeah, there are things you could be attracted to, of course. Because in a relationship, you would need this physical attraction. Now, attraction can actually lead to you building an emotional connection, emotional attachment, and even a thought for a committed, intimate relationship in the future. But lust can work independently of all these emotional attachments, independent of even thinking about building a committed relationship in the future. Now, the perfect example we see about lust in the scripture is Amnon, the son of David. He lusted after his own half-sister, Tamar, a very beautiful woman. She was so beautiful that he could not get his eyes over her. And that is why some women or ladies have been in a place that they see men who are almost obsessed with them. And they are pursuing them like... Sometimes it could feel good because like the attention they give you could feel good, but then it's, it can be healthy. Because all this person is coming and pursuing you for is to get your body, is craving to have sex with you. And now that is the point to note and that is what to beware of when this person is coming at you, lusting after you. Now let me read this scripture so that I can finalize this. I didn't want to make this a long video. I only just wanted to put this distinction so that if you are feeling attraction for someone, it shouldn't be something that you start condemning yourself. It should be something that comes as a signal that you know, if I'm attracted to this person, what am I attracted to about them? If it's just physical, then you have to check yourself and withdraw. You know, it doesn't mean you avoid the person. You can compliment someone. If someone is attracted to you, compliment them and let it leave your head. Let them know that you've seen, oh, you look good, you look beautiful, and all of that. That is as simple as that. You look handsome for a lady, compliment him, and let it leave your head. Don't stay in that place of contemplation. Wow. Now, you're allowing your imagination to create scenes of you almost like lusting or seeing the person naked in your head. Scripture says in Matthew, Jesus was talking about adultery and he said you have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery but i say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart the whole thing jesus took the law higher he said you think adultery is about getting on bed with someone maybe us as christians you feel like i've never slept with anybody you know physically you've not committed the act i'm a virgin uh, I'm a this, I'm a that. When he says, let's take this up. When you are here in your head, lusting, you've already committed adultery. And this can speak to masturbation. When you are here in your head, creating scenes and masturbating, you've already committed adultery. When you're all up in your head, watching pornography and imagining people that you love, that you see, and lusting after them, you've already committed adultery. So now, it now goes beyond you just feeling like, oh, I'm not sleeping with someone physically. I've never had sexual intercourse with anybody. Now, I would love to do a video about sexual purity, which if you would love to watch that video, drop a comment on this particular video and let me know. So I will do that on my next video. But if this video is productive, let me know also. It is a pleasure to have you watch today's video. Now, my last thought on this is, if you feel attracted to someone, now it is your responsibility to take control of your thoughts and not let your thoughts control you. It is your responsibility to know if it means for you to withdraw from this person, then you get to withdraw. But if someone is attracted to you, that is not your problem. It is actually the person's problem. As much as you are not to lead anybody on or take advantage of anybody that is attracted to you, be you a woman or a man, a lady or a guy, a Christian guy. Now it is for you to know. If I feel attracted to someone, for me to keep myself safe, for me personally, I'm going to compliment the person and let it leave my heart, which I mentioned earlier. Secondly, once I feel attracted, attracted to someone, I have to remind myself that it is natural. Look, someone who looks attractive, then I'm attracted, they arouse my interest. That's cool. And then I have to know that Attraction, I can be attracted to someone for diverse reasons. For how they speak, soft speaking, you know, how they look, 
and how intelligent they are when you speak with them the wisdom that comes out of their mouth can be so attractive and on that part when it comes to someone you get into relationship with that is where it can lead you to emotional attachment even with your friendship you need the attraction because there's something that attracted you to all the friends around you whether it's the way they act whether it's the way they speak whether it's the wisdom but there has to be something of value that made the friendship stand so but on the natural side of it attraction is not equal to lust there are two distinct concepts and i hope that you get that in today's video thank you for watching it is a pleasure to have you watch see you in my next video